why I left the rave scene. I'm a 27 year old female in Arizona and my time in the Phoenix and Tucson rave scene between 2005 and 2009 hosted some of the best and worst moments in my life. The worst of which was two separate occurrences involving what I believe to be the same person. The first incident was at a Valentine's Day themed party called Cupid's Revenge in February 2006. There was really good drum and bass and me and my four friends got our hands on some really good pills. Three hours of dancing, lights, and trippy music and I was feeling amazing. Every person I bumped into was my new best friend. Then I bumped into this guy wearing a white dust mask with a cat's nose and whiskers drawn on it. He also had a white painter's hat on, covered in black light paint. I told him his outfit was really cool and I asked him his name. He said, call me Felix, and handed me a dust mask with a puppy mouth and tongue drawn on it. Now, typically people on E will put Vicks Vapor Rub on their chest or on a dust mask because the vapor smells really good and almost enhances the high. I smelt the Vicks on the mask and so I put it on. The Vicks gave me a rush and I started dancing and got more immersed in the crowd. About a half hour later I started tripping balls. I knew it wasn't the E. It was turning into more of an acid trip. I started freaking out. I was seeing monsters and the music was turning into smells. Then I blacked out and woke up on the way home in my best friend's car. I asked her what happened and she told me I was going nuts, kissing strangers, yelling nonsense at people and I almost went home with the wrong group of people. She told me once I got into the car I started crying and confessing all this messed up stuff, including drunkenly kissing her boyfriend a year prior and then passed out. It was a four hour drive home by the way. Fast forward to July 2009. Me and a few friends, different ones, went to go see Diesel Boy at the Ice House in Phoenix. The venue was very cramped and hot, and I was just getting over a cold and was playing it sober that night. By then I was very seasoned in the scene, and had a very strict set of rules on how to handle myself at parties. But that night being the sober one, I took the role of just keeping an eye on my friends. A few hours later, after using the restroom, I was ready to go home and went to find my friends. I finally find one of them. We will call her Stacy. She had wandered off shortly after we got there and when I found her she was sitting on the ground with vomit all down her mouth and chest. Around her neck was a dust mask with a puppy dog's mouth and tongue drawn on it. She was completely incoherent. I had to pick her up and drag her around while I looked for my other two friends. Luckily I found them pretty quickly and once they saw the state Stacy was in we got the hell out of there. I took her home with me and let her sleep on my couch. The next morning she told me what happened. She told me that she got the mask and bought a pill off of a raver that called himself Sylvester and that was wearing a dust mask with whiskers drawn on it. I asked her if he was wearing a painter's cap with black light paint all over it. She said yes. That was the last straw for me when it came to my party life. Between these two occurrences, I was arrested when a party was broken up, got left behind in the desert, and got several bad pills that made me sick. But this guy popping up again just made it all too much and it was a big wake-up call for me. So I'm glad to say that I've calmed down.
So Felix and or Sylvester will never meet again. My neighbor's friend. It was a pretty chill afternoon. I was home alone with my twin sisters and we were outside in the backyard playing our ukuleles. We lived in a huge subdivision at the time and all the houses were literally an arm's length of each other. Well, a new family had moved into the house behind mine which was right in front of my backyard. From my understanding, the father was an exterminator who owned his own company along with his friend, John. John was always at the family's house and they liked to chill in the backyard too, so seeing each other was inevitable. It was cool though because we felt safe. Big mistake. So when the family goes back inside, John lingers about and I can feel his eyes burning a fucking hole through my forehead. So I look up and there he is. He had moved from his chair to the edge of the fence that separates us. I ignore him and play even louder. My sister does the same. You girls are very pretty, and I don't think I've ever seen twins so beautiful. I notice how his words are slurred. He must have had one too many beers. Look, the Hansons went to the park. You guys can come play with my penis if you like. We noped the fuck out and went inside and locked the doors. We watched as he drunkenly tried to jump the fence and stumble over to the back door. He starts banging on the back door, making the whole house shake. I'm going to fucking kill you and fuck your bodies at the same fucking time, you sluts. Is that what you want? A little Johnny fun time? I'm going to exterminate your pussies. This goes on for like five more minutes before some of the other neighbors call the cops. It was actually pretty funny now that I look back on it, but for two 12 year olds it was actually pretty frightening. So my neighbor's creepy friend, let's not meet. Some random guy tried to steal my dog. I live in New Jersey, in Rockaway. I lived in a townhouse and had many streets and neighbors. I am a girl and was 12 at the time. I was walking a foster dog who was a pit bull terrier mix. He was dog and people friendly, and his name was Shaka. Many people petted him, but one guy scared me. I was walking Shaka when this guy walked up to me and asked if he could pet him. I said yes. This guy looked 30 or 40. I wasn't really sure. He began asking more questions about the dog. Breed, age, name, where I got him. I had and still have anxiety. I told him the to shelter and explained we were fostering him. He asked if he could hold the leash. I said no and the man seemed to get angry. Then he started asking me questions about me. How old are you? Where do you live? What's your name? I didn't want to be rude so I told him my name. Not a smart answer. I have to go now. I was trying to get away from him. I will take your dog for you, then you can drop by my house and pick him up later. I said no and made an excuse to leave. Do you want to be my friend? He kept following me. I didn't want to go home so he would know where I live. I told him I didn't need friends. 
I was getting scared and didn't really know what else to say. I don't have any friends. Then Shaka can be my friend. My dog seemed to know what was happening and got nervous. He is getting adopted by someone else. I have to go. I lied. I have a puppy. Would you like to see her? He probably didn't have a puppy. No, I am really busy. I have to go. I was hyperventilating and getting scared. He tried to grab the leash, but I pulled back. Your dog looks nice. I think I want to adopt him. He lunged towards me. I started running. I must have been in better shape than he was because I lost him and ended up on another street. Now I am even more paranoid. So to the guy who tried to take my dog. Let's not meet again. Ever.